What's up everybody? My name is Ryan and today I'm going to be talking about whether or not you should be putting your car under the, your business's name or not. But first, it would be awesome if you're new here. Thanks for joining me for you to subscribe to my channel and I'll be keeping you guys up to date with all things tax and business. And also give this video a like. I'd really appreciate that. And leave me questions or comments down in the comment section below and I'll do my best to get to them. Okay? So the question is whether or not you should be buying a vehicle and putting it under your name personally or your business's name. One thing I want to get out the window immediately is I'm not talking about like legitimate company vehicles, you know, like if you are in construction and you have a work van or a work truck that you solely use for work, or if you're in the business of renting cars out and you have a fleet of cars or if you're in the business of buying and selling vehicles and you know obviously you need to purchase those vehicles under your business's name that's not what i'm talking about i'm more talking about this what's up bro yeah man just chilling thinking about getting a new car you know maybe like a benz or a mercedes or a beamer if you will yeah i know i'm such a baller yeah and you know what i i heard from my from my friend that if, if you put it under your business, if I put my car under my business, I'll get to write the whole damn thing off. Yeah, I know. It's crazy, right? Yeah, man, in, in no time, I'm gonna be balling the hell out of my life with my new Beamer. So what happens when you purchase a vehicle and you put it under your business? What does that even mean? So first of all, that means when you buy a vehicle, you register it or title it under the name of your business. Okay, so that's the first thing you gotta do. The second thing is if you are financing the vehicle, it has to be financed under the name of your business as well. Putting your car in the name of the business puts more liability on your business and it's, it might be more expensive in the long run because having it financed under your business, usually uh, lenders will charge you more interest, higher interest rate than if you financed it personally. Your insurance will be more complicated because you have to have proper liability insurance and auto insurance to cover your company vehicle because you know you might get in an accident while you're on while you're conducting business so your company has to be liable for that a couple a couple upsides here is that you know your vehicles taxes and insurance and gas will be deductible to the business if your car is properly registered and accounted for under your business when you hear that you put your vehicle under the business you get to write it off okay and there's a couple ways that this happens. So typically when you purchase a car, it's considered a fixed asset, which means you can't really write it off all in one go. You know, it's depreciated over time, typically five years for a car. So if you bought a car for $50,000, then you typically would take a $10,000 depreciation for five years. So that's one thing to consider. Now there are special rules for small business owners that let you depreciate more of the car up front, depending on the type of the car. So you've heard of the 6,000 pounds vehicle deduction rule uh, that allows you to take the full value of the car's depreciation all in the year of purchase, okay? That's under section 179 of the tax code. So if you're interested in that, check out that section of the tax code. It gives you more detail on that deduction. I'm not gonna go into much detail here. Another thing to consider if you want it to be tax deductible is that it has to be fully used or very, very high majority used for the business, okay? So if you're, if you're buying a car that's like a personal car and you're using it like 50-50 for business, but you wanted to put it under your business's name to get the tax deduction, that's not gonna fly with the Internal Revenue Service, okay? I mean, it might fly. You, there's a chance you may never get caught. There's a chance you may never get audited. But if you do get audited and they question your vehicle deduction, then that's where you might get in trouble because you're going to have to pay taxes on those deductions that you took if the IRS decides to disallow those deductions. Okay. So if you go to, if they audit you and tell, and you tell them, oh, I use it 50% for business or even 70% for business, the IRS can disallow the entire deductions and then you'll pay taxes, penalties, and interest on the whole thing and it's not gonna be a good look or a good situation or outcome for you. What they really wanna see is to make sure that it's a legitimate business vehicle that's used solely for business, okay? Now, 
you can use it personally as well if it is a legitimate business vehicle, but then you have to take what's called a personal use tax on that, which complicates things more, you know, because you're technically using a company vehicle for personal reasons. So you're kind of, you're, you're incurring an income in a way for using that company vehicle. So what do I recommend to most people who are in the scenario and who are thinking about putting their car in the, under their business? Uh, I recommend just purchasing it personally, registering it to yourself, getting financing through yourself personally, and then just taking either the mileage deduction or reimbursing yourself through an accountable plan for your mileage. Now for 2020, the mileage rate is 57 and a half cents per mile, which is, which is a pretty good deduction, you know, especially if you drive a lot, you know, my realtor clients, my construction clients, they have huge deductions. They're driving 15, 20, maybe 25,000 miles a year just for business. Okay. And so that ends up actually being more beneficial to them in the long run than purchasing the vehicle under the business and, and taking that depreciation deduction, uh, you know, under the business. So mileage is a huge tool for a tax deduction. Now, in order to properly write off mileage and for it to count legitimately on your tax return and through an audit, you need to keep track of a mileage log. And there are tools out there now that let you do this very easily. Like one tool you've probably heard a lot is called Mile IQ. Mile IQ basically uses the GPS on your phone. It tracks everywhere you go, everywhere you drive, and then it separates them into trips. So you maybe you go from, from home to a client's house, it'll know that as one trip, or maybe you went to your, from your client's house to like Wendy's for lunch. That's another trip. It separates those trips out and you can classify each trip as either business or personal. And then now you have this nice detailed, very detailed log of your business trips and your personal trips. It's broken out by mileage and it might even give you the deduction amounts for each trip. Now, these are the kind of logs that the IRS needs to see if they audit you for your mileage. And it's, it's better to have this kind of system in place up front than to recreate it if you find out you've, you're being audited, okay? Because a lot of my clients, before I took them on, they were just estimating their miles or they were just kind of, you know, using Google Maps to determine, oh, I drove this much here on this day and this day. And then they made like a more detailed and refined estimation, but you know, some of my clients got audited and then they had to go back and basically create logs for the IRS to show them this, this meeting was legitimate. I was meeting this person, I was meeting this person. So it's better to have these systems in place up front, So you don't have to do all that work if you were to get audited. Okay. That's all I got for today. Thanks for joining me. Smash the like button if you haven't done so already and subscribe to my channel for useful updates and let me know in the comments below if you have any questions concerns anything like that okay take care y'all hey, see you next time in the mood for a switch up i hit the function hit the rose right till i hiccup i hit the stage and leave with money that's a sticker she picture perfect so i told him i'm a flicker bill i'm in the mood for a change up i leave the city and return with my change up